Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. There is a lot to talk about today. This is a huge episode of the Market Watch. I think the common link overall when it comes to card spiking this week has to do with the stimulus checks going out in the United States. There's a lot of players with some extra income looking to spend it, and they are spending it on a variety of different Magic cards, different formats, different eras of Magic. You're going to see it all here today. Much like we've had to do in previous weeks, we do have a threshold again in this video because there's so much spiking, we can't talk about it all. This week's threshold is $5, so every card we talk about today is moving up or down at least $5. Also this week, Time Spiral Remastered came out, but it is a little too early to talk about those prices yet since we're still waiting for them to stabilize. Quickly before we get into all of it though, just a fast reminder, if you go to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use that Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. Currently, you can pick up a whole variety of items that they have on their website. They got an assortment of Strixhaven products now, including the Commander decks. They have the Challenger decks up there now, and a whole lot of other things, too. Remember, any order that's over $100, or if your order only consists of singles, shipping will be free in the United States. Also, whenever you use the promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated. So thank you. And without any further ado, let's get into it. We're going to begin with the Pioneer Legal Spotlight. Not a lot to talk about in Standard today. There are cards moving. They haven't quite made that $5 threshold, though, this week. So we're going to start here with the Pioneer Legal cards that are moving the most. First off, we have Gyre Sage. This is the copy from the Ravnica Allegiance Simic Guild Kit. It's going up $667 this week to $1394. This, like a lot of cards you're going to see today, happens to be getting some additional commander play due to new Kaldheim cards. This is showing up in a lot of the Vorinclex Monstrous Raider builds right now. Master of Cruelties, this is the one from the Ravnica Allegiance Rakdos Guild Kit. It goes up 918 this week to 1996. Solid Commander card in Kali of the Vast and much more. This was also in a Karavik the Merciless deck on Game Nights this week. That could have brought some more attention to it as well. This next card was also in that deck on Game Nights. Additionally, it was in another deck in that episode too, a Tassiger the Golden Fang build. This is Torment of Hailfire. Hour of Devastation goes up 859 to 2796. Mystery Booster up 1062 to 2886. Great Commander card. This is getting a push from new Keltime cards as well, but nothing is pushing this more than Turgrid God of Fright slash Turgrid's Lantern. Lanowar Waste, the original from Apocalypse. It goes up 1112 to 1996. Huge Commander mana base card, which fits into the new extremely popular Commander deck, Lathril Blade of the Elves. And here come the Slivers. We have Sliver Hive. This isn't the only Sliver related card you're going to see today. This goes up 1302 to 2989. Now, first, Keltime brought us some support for Slivers in the form of Shapeshifters with Changeling. Time Spiral Remastered is just dropped, and that set is reprinting some key Slivers like Sliver Legion. Sliver builds will always be popular in Commander. Now that some players can get a card like Sliver Legion a lot cheaper, they are thinking about building these decks, and some of these other cards are increasing in value. This one also happens to see play in Modern and Legacy Slivers, too. Lastly, in this section, we have Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger up 2596 to 8499. This actually does see Pioneer play many times in Mono Green mid range. Modern, it's in Tron. In Commander, you'll find this in Closed Elect, the Great Distortion, and more. And this also appeared in one of those decks on Game Nights this week. You could find this in the Joyra of the Gitu deck list. That brings us to the Modern Legal Spotlight. Let's see what's going on in the world of Modern. First, a couple cards down in value. Gemstone Caverns from Time Spiral down 667 to 5248. Of course, this is going down because it is being reprinted in Time Spiral Remastered. In Modern, you'll find this in Five Color Cycling. Also gets a fair amount of play in Commander. And our last card going down in value is Blood Moon, the original from the Dark, finally retracing after a lot of aggressive spikes. This goes down 5097 to 14595 this week. This is in Modern decks like Mono Red Aggro, Grill Midrange, and more. See some legacy play and a lot of commander play in mono red and red heavy builds, old and new. Seems fitting with all this focus on slivers for commander that our first card going up in value in this section is a sliver. The first sliver goes up 1104 to 3216. Next we have Grand Arbiter Augustine the Fourth. This is the one from Dissension going up 1589 to 4888. Fairly popular commander and in the 99 of a number of builds too. Oriok Champion from Iconic Masters, this one was lagging behind the 5th Dawn copy for a while. 
It goes up this week, though, 1602 to 5595. Now, players are thinking about the day when Magic Fest commence, and with the recent changes to the modern meta, some players will need to build new decks or change existing ones. And if you go over to MTGO right now, you can see which decks are performing well in this new meta. Just so happens that a number of those decks contain this card. Things like Heliod Company, Death and Taxes, Hammer Time, Humans, and more. Also, this does see some Commander play, too. Speaking of Commander, here's a huge Commander card with Doubling Season. This is seeing playing new builds, too, in Commander, like Coma Cosmos Serpent, Vorin Clex Monstrous Raider, Lathro Blade of the Elves, and more. This was also in a Kesa deck on Commander Versus this week, which could have brought a little attention to it, not that this card needs that much help. Battle Bond goes up 1262 to 7423. Double Masters up 1481 to 7433. Modern Masters up $16 to 7599. Ravnica, City of Guilds up 1614 to 7894. And our last card in this section is Liliana of the Vale. And this is another card that is benefiting from the banned and restricted list update that happened in February. In Modern, this is in Jund, Stoneblade Builds, Rakdos Midrange, and more. Sees Legacy Play 2. And now it's even a bigger commander card because it shows up in those Turgrid God of Fright decks as well. In Estrada, 1517 to 9748. Ultimate Masters up 2598 to 10257. And Modern Masters 2017 goes up 2687 to 9841. All right, that brings us to the Vintage Spotlight. And again this week, when we talk about Unlimited Arabian Nights, Antiquities, and Legends, we're only going to discuss cards that are moving at least $100 and at least 10%. There's just so much happening right now when it comes to card spikes from those sets. Also remember, as we go through these prices, we're talking about high, high-grade copies of the cards here. So if you're willing to shop around a little bit, maybe get a light-played copy or a lower-grade copy, you can still get these cards a lot cheaper. Don't forget that. Also, I mentioned this over the last few weeks, but there's more graded copies circulating in the marketplace now, more so than ever, and it's not just Power 9 cards. These new graded copies are starting to throw averages a little higher than normal. So sometimes it might look like a card spike, but it could just be that you have more graded copies for sale now than you had in the past. And I do think you have to have that expectation as you look at older card prices, and probably more so in the future. Finally, there is still some market manipulation out there, so be careful. If I see it, I'll point it out. But if you have a lot of sellers with high asking prices, that can throw off the data on those data tracking websites. So again, you might see a card that looks like it's inflating in value that's not really selling for any more than it was the week before. And remember, not all market manipulation is necessarily meant to be malicious. I mean, sure, some people are trying to spike a card price to sell other copies of it. But more often now, you're seeing sellers just putting their cards up at a higher price point simply because the market's moving so quickly, they don't want to lose out. And they'll accept offers, but having those cards sit out there at higher prices, it can throw things off a little bit from time to time. So just keep that in mind. Let's see what's happening. Force of Will is our first one here. Double Masters goes up 730 this week to 110. Eternal Masters up 1158 to 12064. Highly played Commander, Legacy, and Vintage card. This was in the Tassiger as well as Joyra deck on game nights this week, too. Gilded Drake is next. This is our first reserve list card on the list today, as you can see from the upper right-hand corner. Also, it did get a Telerian Community College mention this week as well. This goes up 1308 to 44640, and this does see Legacy playing many times in Esper Vile. Also, it's a fairly popular Commander card. Intuition from Tempest. This goes up 1350 to 21150. This gets a good amount of commander play, of course. In Legacy, though, you'll find it in Sneak and Show, Omnitel, and more. Additionally, this was also in the Tassiker deck on Game Nights this week. Great Vintage card, great Commander card. Also got a Telerian Community College mention this week. This is Mana Crypt. Mystery Booster up 1105 to 12903. Eternal Masters up 1435 to 13690. Here's a card that's banned in Commander, so it appears to be driven by collectors more than anything right now. This is Limited Resources going up 1601 to 1840. This is not on the reserve list, but it's not the type of card that Watsi would have very high on their reprint priority list. Demotic Tutor, highly played Commander and Vintage card. This is going to be a Strixhaven Mystical Archive card, though, so keep that in mind. This was also in that Tassiker deck as well as the Caravac deck this week on Game Nights. Mystery Booster up 576 to $55. Ultimate Masters up 740 to 6244. Revised goes up 1828 to 6497. Mana Vault, this is the copy from 4th edition going up 1858 to $80.32. Sees vintage play and it is a highly played commander card in old and new builds. This is another card that showed up in that Tassiker deck on game nights. 
Also, it did get a Telerian Community College mention this week as well. Our first dual land of the day, this is the revised copy of Savannah going up 1860 to 36499. Null Rod goes up 1898 to 137.99. This does see a lot of legacy play, sometimes in Delver builds and more there. In Vintage, it's in Golo stacks and more there. And this additionally got a mention on one of the professor's videos this week on Telerian Community College. Necropotence. Now, this is the Deckmasters Garfield vs. Finkel copy, only comes in foil. It goes up 1921 this week to 129.95. Sees vintage play in Doomsday and more. Great commander card, too. This is getting some additional commander play now in Turgrid builds. Those decks can have a lot of reciprocal discard effects, so you always want to draw extra cards there whenever you can. Additionally, this was another card that showed up in that Tassiker build on game nights. Plateau from Revised up 2491 to 377.50. Grim Monolith, this goes up 3720 to 450, and this does see legacy play, sometimes in Mono Green Cloud Post, also gets a little vintage play. Highly played commander card and combo enabler in builds old and new. Wheel of Fortune from Revised, the 5397 to 573.30, this does see some vintage play, and it's also a great commander card. Seeing even more play now in commander, sometimes in those Bergy God of Storytelling slash Harnfell Horn of Bounty builds. Also, it did get a Telerian Community College mention this week as well. And it was in the Caravac deck on game nights this week, too. Badlands from Revised. It goes up 64.88 to 624.88. Allosaurus Shepherd. This continues to dry up in the secondary market, going up 81.49 this week to 216. These jumpstart cards are just really hard to get your hands on, especially the mythics that are highly sought after, like this one. Now, when it comes to true value, I have yet to see these cards selling for over $200. I have seen some sell for 130 to 140 at times, which is pretty high regardless. This does see play in Legacy Elves, and that deck is seeing more play now in the new meta in Legacy. In Commander, of course, this is an Elf Tribal builds, including the very popular Lathral Blade of the Elves. This even sees a little vintage play, and it was in a Marwyn the Nurturer deck on Commander Versus this week. My J Jin, this goes up 11065 to 15875 this week. This is the copy from Arabian Nights, the original one. This goes to show you that collectors aren't just looking for these reserveless cards when it comes to high-grade older cards. They're happy picking up cards like this and getting them graded at times too. Now this price point of $158.75 is more of an average between high-grade graded copies and high-grade raw copies. Same is true for this price point. Ashnod's Transmogrant, the original copy from Antiquities, it goes up $119.07 to $139. Third verse, same as the first, you could say the same thing about this price point. It's an average between the high-grade graded copies and the high-grade raw copies. Taiga from Unlimited up 120 to 878.96. Rock Hydra from Unlimited. Now there is a little market manipulation going on here. On paper, it looks like it's going up 124.60 to 242.48. High-grade copies are selling for about 60 to 70 raw, graded about 120. Elephant Graveyard up 185.61 to 522.75. How accurate is that? Well, high grade raw copies are selling for about 480, which is close. Haven't seen any high grade graded copies sell recently, but it stands to reason next time one does, it could pass that. Here's another card where the price point is an average between, again, high grade raw copies and high grade graded copies. This is Island of Wok Wok. It goes up 188.74 this week to 501.53. Angus McKenzie up 221.99 to 674.99. That one's a little inflated. High grade raw copies are selling between 300 and 340. Haven't seen any high grade graded copies sell recently though. The Abyss, this goes up 349.99 to 2,999.99, or does it? Well, actually, again, this looks like a pretty average price point if you were to compare the high grade graded copies and the high grade raw copies. Ali from Cairo, this one's a little inflated, technically going up 384.10 to 1,422. High-grade raw copies have been selling for about 690. Natural Selection from Unlimited, on paper going up 573.24 to 773.24. I will tell you, raw high-grade copies have sold for about $245 this week. Graded copies haven't quite caught up to that price point yet, so this could be some sellers putting some high-grade graded copies up at a very high price point. Fishing for an offer since they're not sure exactly what they're worth right now. Library of Alexandria up 727.20 to $3,999.99. High grade copies can at least get close to this price point. Underground C, the revised copy up 59.74 to 1,127.50. Unlimited up 899.60 to 3,498.96. 
When it comes to that unlimited copy, I have seen raw cards breaking $1,500 in good condition. I did see one break $2,000, but that seemed like an outlier. Could be somebody overpaid, could be a false sale. High-grade graded copies have definitely broken $2,000. Regardless, though, this price seems a little high right now. All right, let's close out this section with three moxes from Unlimited. First, we have Mox Emerald up $2,867.51 to $7,000. High-grade copies are going for about $4,400 raw. Graded, I haven't seen any recent high-grade sales, so in the future, they could be a little bit higher than they have been. This still feels like a pretty high price point, though. Mox Ruby from Unlimited up $2,999.73 to $6,999.72. High-grade copies have sold for about $4,600, graded about $5,500. And last for the section, we have Mox Sapphire from Unlimited. This goes up $4,439.11 to $9,513.27. When it comes to sales, there was a high-grade graded copy that did sell for about this price this week. Is that for real? Is it an outlier? I guess time will tell. Raw copies have been breaking $6,000 in high-grade. Time for the Commander Spotlight. There's still some reserve list cards sneaking into this section that happen to see a little Commander play because the format is so open, but are really moving because of their status on the reserve list. If that's the case for any of the cards we come across today, I'll just go ahead and tell you the price. If I don't have anything else to add, I won't. Here we go. Jason the Mind Sculptor. This is the one from Double Masters at 509 to 59.95. Good Commander card. Seeing more play now in Asika, God of the Tree slash the Prismatic Bridge builds. This is also another card benefiting from the recent changes in Modern and Legacy. In Modern, this is in Azorius Control, which is doing much better now in the format. Other decks there too. Additionally, this has been getting more Legacy play as well. Baron Master Wizard, maybe a little speculation since Strixhaven previews are about to begin. It does see some Commander play though. It goes up 518 this week to 4949. Inner Sanctum goes up 523 to 1612. Elish Norn Grand Cenobite, this is the original copy from New Phyrexia. It goes up 526 to 2949. This is a fairly popular commander and part of the 99 and a lot of builds, including some new ones like a Sika God of the Tree. You can also find this many times in Legacy Reanimator. Liliana Dreadhorde General from War of the Spark. This goes up 528 to 2980. This is in a variety of commander decks, new and old, and it is seeing more play now in those Turgrid builds too. Here's another key sliver going up in value for the reasons we mentioned earlier. Sliver Hive Lord, this is the Mystery Booster copy, up 531 this week to 1890. Bitter Blossom from Modern Masters 2015, it goes up 531 this week to 4966. Very popular Commander card. Guess what? It's seeing more play in Turgrid decks too. Here's a Chronicles card, believe it or not. Concordant Crossroads goes up 545 to 4789. And this does see a good amount of Commander play, and it is getting more play now in Lathril Blade of the Elves builds. Kozilek Butcher of Truth from Modern Masters 2015. It goes up 547 to 9169 this week. This gets a lot of commander play in those very popular Kozilek the Great Distortion builds and more. Seeing more play now thanks to new Keltime cards like Asika God of the Tree. This was another card that was on Game Nights this week in that Joyra deck. And it even sees Legacy play. Many times you'll find this in Mono Green Cloud Post. Sarah's Sanctum. This goes up 551 this week to 399.98. Great card for enchantment heavy commander builds. Also, it's in Legacy Enchantress. Fauna Shaman, this is the one from Magic 2011, up 552 to 1877. Another good commander card that is getting more play now because of Lathril Blade of the Elves. Ruby Medallion from Tempest, this whole cycle is fantastic in commander. It goes up 554 to 4831. Obviously, this particular one is going to be good in mono red or red heavy builds. Just so happens, Kaltime brought us some really good mono red builds. Bergy God of Storytelling, Magda Brazen Outlaw. Toralf God of Fury slash Toralf's Hammer. Also, this has seen a little legacy play recently in the Epic Storm. Aberroth, this goes up 565 to 1225. Time Warp from Tempest, fairly popular commander card in various builds, new and old. It goes up 565 to $30.53. Craterhoof Behemoth from Modern Masters 2017, it goes up 566 to 5550. This is a popular commander card, seeing more play now in a variety of builds based around Keltime cards. Two of the most popular ones, though, are Lathral Blade of the Elves and Vorinclex Monstrous Raider. This is also in Legacy Elves decks, and it did get a Talarian Community College mention this week, too. Ancient Tomb from Ultimate Masters of 591 to 5699. Highly played Commander card. Also sees a lot of Legacy and even Vintage play. This was in that Tassiger as well as the Joyra build on Game Nights this week, too. 
Contamination up 601 to 4249, another card that is getting more commander play in those Turgrid God of Fright decks. Vidalkin Ori, the one from Conspiracy, up 601 to 4450, highly played commander card, getting even more play now in Yorn God of Winter builds. And this was in a Radha Air to Keld deck on game nights this week. Mind Slicer from 9th Edition. This goes up 620 to 3499. This is another card seeing more play in Turgrid builds in Commander. Chrome Mox, the one from Eternal Masters. It goes up 637 to 5713. Highly played Commander card again in a lot of places. Also gets a lot of Legacy play, a little Vintage play, and this showed up in the Tassiker build on game nights this week. Sword of Feast and Famine. This is the copy from the Modern Event deck going up 637 to 5827. This is another card that gets a lot of commander play in a lot of different decks, and it also shows up in modern and legacy decks with Stoneforge Mystic. Metalworker, this goes up 639 to 198.99, and this is another one that you might find sometimes in Commander Codes like the Great Distortion builds and other places too in the format. Palancron up 640 to 129.99. This is a good commander card and combo enabler in the format. And it was in the Tassiger deck on Game Nights this week, too. I do think a lot of players are trying to build those decks that they saw in that episode. Snapcaster Mage, we haven't seen this in a while, from Ultimate Masters. It goes up 652 to 5288. Gets a lot of commander play, seeing a little more play now in Orvar, the all-form builds in the format. This is also benefiting, though, from those changes in Modern as well as Legacy. Modern, this is in Azorius Control and more. Sees a lot of Legacy play, some Vintage play, too. And this was in the Joyra deck on Game Nights. Zombie Master from Revised. It goes up 676 to 1898. This is great in Zombie Commander builds, obviously. And it is getting more play because of a Keldheim card. Narfi Betrayer King. Coat of Arms, the copy from 8th Edition, up 685 to 2599. Great Tribal Commander card. Seeing more play now in some new builds, including Lathro Blade of the Elves and Coma Cosmos Serpent. Here's a fantastic card for those Turgrid God of Fright builds in Commander. This is Grave Pact. The Plain Chase copy goes up 630 to 4149. The 10th edition copy up 708 to 4249. And yet another card you might find in Turgrid God of Fright builds in Commander. This is Tainted Aether from Urza Saga. It goes up 735 this week to 1978. Deserted Temple up 738 to 6999. This is good for untapping a land that can be tapped for a lot of mana, like Cabal Coffers, for example. And this does see a good amount of commander play, but as you might have guessed, it is showing up in a lot of Turgrid builds there right now. Lotus Veil, this goes up 801 this week to 6702. Recruiter of the Guard, this is the one from Mystery Booster, up 815 to 2871. This is in a variety of commander builds, old and new. In Legacy, you'll find this in Death and Taxes, a deck that's doing a lot better in this new meta. It's also in Esper Vile and Alluren. Parallel Lives, up 837 to 5999. Highly played commander card, getting more play now and builds around Keltheim cards like Coma Cosmos Serpent, Lathro Blade of the Elves, and more. This was in a Kesa deck, actually, on Commander Versus this week, too. Uh-oh, it's a Shadow More Rare. Wheel of Sun and Moon, up 844 to 2295. I think it's time to use my one per video. As you might have heard by now, this time period in Magic, there was a recession in the game, less packs were cracked. So rares that have yet to be reprinted especially, they tend to get a little spiky when someone pays attention to them. So why are people paying attention to this one? Well, it does get a little commander play, which is why it's here. But I think the main reason it's moving this much right now is really because of Modern. You can find this in Heliod Company now, and that deck is doing really well in this new modern meta. Lord of Tresser Horn, fairly popular commander actually. It goes up 850 to 1849. Alpha Investments did do a video this week talking about Alliances cards, so maybe this is moving a little bit because of that. There's also some other cards that you're going to see later in the video from that set. Force of Negation up 864 this week to 6864. Highly played Commander card, also highly played in other formats. Modern Azorius Control and more there. You'll find this in a lot of Legacy and Vintage decks too. Additionally, you might have seen this in the Joyra decklist from Game Nights this week. And here's another card that was in that same deck from Game Nights. It is Cavern of Souls. Ultimate Masters up 636 to 7371. Avacyn Restored up 740 to 7487. Modern Masters 2017 up 873 to 7642. It is worth noting that this just got added to the list with Keldheim, so there are some new copies of this coming out slowly. That particular copy of the card looks like it's trending up as well. I didn't put it in the video, though, because those new list cards are still really unstable. So maybe in another week or two, we can start talking about those in the video. 
But anyway, this is a huge commander card in a lot of different decks. Happens to be very good in Sliver decks. In Modern, this is an Amulet Titan, Eldrazi Tron, and much more there. This sees Legacy and Vintage play too. Tradewind Rider from Tempest up 924 to 1575. This is getting a little additional play in Commander. Occasionally, this shows up in a Yorn God of Winter build. Urza's Incubator, Commander Anthology Volume 2 up 701 to 3889. Urza's Destiny goes up 927 to 4719. This is a great commander card for tribal builds, especially for tribes that don't have a lot of support, or if the tribes have higher casting cost creatures like dragons. Replenish, another card that's great in those enchantment heavy commander builds. It goes up 958 to 149.99. Vorinclex, Voice of Hunger from New Phyrexia, up 962 to 5376. Worth noting that this also was added to the list with Keldheim. This is a popular card, though, in Commander, seeing more play around some new Keldheim cards, like a Sika God of the Tree. Yet another key sliver here. This is Sliver Overlord from Scourge, going up 987 to 3441. Eladamri, Lord of Leaves. This goes up 992 to 12979. Of course, this is getting additional Commander play in those Lathral Blade of the Elves decks. Lifeline, up 1045 to 6288. Ristic Study, this is another highly played commander card. You find this all over the place. This was in a couple of those Game Nights decks too, Tassiger as well as Joyra. Jumpstart goes up 624 to 4550. Mystery Booster up 1063 to 4398. Treachery up 1181 to 12313, getting some additional commander play now in Orvar, the all form builds. This was also in the Tassiger build in Game Nights this week. Phyrexian Altar from Ultimate Masters up 1293 to 7193, another highly played commander card and combo enabler for the format, and yet another card that can show up in Turgrid God of Fright builds. This also combos though in another new deck list with Ranar the Ever Watchful, and another card Samurai of the Pale Curtain, which we saw a couple weeks ago on our list. Here's another Alliances card, Sheltered Valley, it goes up 1353 to 1999. Herald of Sarah, looks like there's a buyout happening right now with this card. It jumped up 1698 to 2999. Cleansing also jumped quite a bit, 2160 to 4149. And again, it looks like a reserveless buyout could be going on here. Auspicious Ancestor up 2224 to $39. This is another one that spiked really fast about a week ago. Now, I will say when it comes to true sales, though, I haven't seen them selling for $39. Raw copies seem to be going for about $20. That is still pretty amazing, considering over a week ago, this card was worth basically nothing. Season of the Witch up $27.83 to $74.99, although high-grade copies seem to be moving at $50 to $60. Survival of the Fittest from Exodus up $33.21 to $334, although that price point is kind of an average between high-grade graded and high-grade raw copies. This does see play in a variety of different commander builds. Edgar Markov, this is only found in foil. It goes up 34.60 to 69.47 on paper. Now, I did see a random high sale, but it looks like most high grade copies are selling for about $40. It is an extremely popular commander, and it did not get an etch foil reprint in Commander Legends. And here's another very popular commander, also part of the 99 of a lot of builds. One of those builds happens to be Turgrid. On top of that, this is one of those jumpstart mythic rares. Tiny Bones Trinket Thief, it goes up 3583 to 8747. No Mercy for Merz's Legacy, up 3619 this week to $80.49. This is a solid commander card. You'll find this in Queen Marchesa builds and others in the format. Now it can show up in Turgrid decks, and it was in the Caravac deck on Game Nights this week too. Another card that was in that Caravac deck, it was also in the Tassiger deck on Game Nights. This is Cabal Coffers. Torment goes up 1309 to 10298. Plane Chase up 44.52 to 139.99. Now in reality though, the Plane Chase copies in high grade seem to be going for 70 to 75 dollars. The Torment ones for about 70. You don't see a lot of graded copies of this selling or anything like that. Although if you were to grade one and sell it, maybe it could go for closer to that price point. It is a highly played Commander card, great with Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth, which happened to be just reprinted in Time Spiral Remastered. I don't think that's a coincidence. This is also seeing some additional play now in new builds, and the most popular being Turgrid God of Fright. That's probably not a coincidence either. Feldegrift, this is another card from Alliances that jumped this week. It goes up 4518 to 69.84. High grade copies in reality, though, are only going for about 25 to 30. Again, maybe if you were to get one graded, you could sell it for more, but people really aren't doing that with this card, at least not yet. It is a fairly popular commander. And one more Alliances card, Lake of the Dead, and in theory it's going up 143.49 to 299.99. 99 
That's actually pretty close. The raw copies are selling for about 175 to 200, graded around 275. This is in many commander builds, including Turgrid God of Fright. And finally, for this section, we have Sliver Queen. You know why this is moving, but this is the Sliver Lord that's on the reserve list. It goes up 16703 to 59894. And that price point, again, is an average between high grade graded copies and high grade raw copies. All right, that brings us to the premium spotlight. There's a lot happening in the world of premium cards. Things are spiking all over the place. If I had the time, I could have done a whole series of videos this week just on premium cards. But like always, I chose some cards that I wanted to talk about. There's still a lot of other things happening out there that aren't in this video, though, so keep that in mind. For example, some masterpieces are spiking. Things like Chrome Mox and Mana Vault have been pretty aggressive this week at times. Also, even some Planeswalker stamp cards have been going up quite a bit. Now, market manipulation is still a big issue when it comes to these cards, so be careful if you're making any purchases. Just do your research. Urza's Incubator is the first one to talk about. This is the Urza's Destiny foil, going up $18.94 to $314.69. And again, this is a price that's kind of between high-grade raw and high-grade graded copies. Sliver Hive, the foil for Magic 2015, goes up $19.20 to $49.95. Also, the Sliver Hive Lord foil for Magic 2015 should be climbing a lot too. I just wasn't able to find any on sale at the time I made this video because they've completely dried up. I do think when we see another sale in the future, though, that card's going to go pretty high. Phyrexian Altar, the Invasion foil, going up $20 to $329, and they actually can get close to that price point. The Ultimate Masters foil, in theory, up $33.99 to $94.50. Those are really selling for about $60 to $65 in high grade. Cabal Coffers, in theory, Friday Night Magic Foil going up $13.61 to $128.99. The Torment Foil up $71.38 to $298.95. And that Friday Night Magic one is pretty close. The last sale was almost $120. The Torment one, though, you can get that cheaper. Raw copies are about $175. Oath of Druids, this is the Judge Foil. We haven't talked about this card yet, so we'll discuss it a little bit. It goes up, in theory, $81.68 to $149.85. The last sale, though, was almost $90. You'll find this one in Vintage Oath of Druids decks, of course. Also sees a fair amount of commander play, and it can show up in some of those Asika God of the Tree builds now. Here's another card we didn't talk about today. This is Rafelos Lanowar Emissary, the foil copy from Ursus Destiny. This one is banned in Commander, still going up in value, though, in theory, up 156.42 to 563.44. Although, the last high-grade raw copy I saw sell went for about $500. And finally, the egregious market manipulation award of the week goes to Grim Monolith the Foil from Urza's Legacy. In theory, going up 1,375 to 4,762.50. High grade raw copies sell for about 2,000. High grade graded copies can hit around 3,000. All right, that's going to do it for the Market Watch. Pretty intense episode here. A lot of things spiking quite a bit, but it's not all reserve list cards, which is nice to see. It is a variety of different things. So it does feel like the market is moving a little more evenly. I don't necessarily think this is a bubble and everything's going to crash, but I do think you are going to see some retracing in the coming months. Some of these prices going back down, at least some percentage. But time will tell. Until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.